Hello everybody, John here from Unbeatable Tech. Thank you for joining me today and taking a minute out of your day to maybe have your lunch with me if you're here in Eastern Standard Time or wherever you're at right now. In this video, I wanna share with you probably the most levitating, like making yourself feel lighter understanding of the three offer system. If you're ever feeling overwhelmed or not able to connect the dots between all the individual activities or all the individual products or all the individual things you're trying to do to grow your business and put them cohesively together into a thriving, predictable, and profitable online business, I really hope that today's lesson is going to lay out some of those foundational building blocks to let you move forward and build out your offers and build out your entire system together. All right, this is building on top of a previous video I did last week, which was the beginner's guide to sales funnels. So I'm not going to go over all the individual building blocks, like the little amino acids of the, the system here. That was done last week. So if you haven't already done so, be sure to check that out and I'll make sure that maybe in the future I leave a link in the description below to that one. But you can go to my YouTube channel, unbeatableattack.com slash YouTube and check that one out. But in this one, this is gonna be awesome. Be sure to stick around to the end because so many times I see people talk about their funnel, their, their one funnel or their, their one product, or I see people on the other end of the spectrum where there's all these little spaghetti products that they just throw against the wall and there's no cohesive journeys, no linear process that gets them from start to finish in the customer journey for their ideal client. In this video, however, I wanna bridge the gap between the, the one offer, guy and the go crazy person that kind of throws so much to the wall and show a three-step process that I think can create so much certainty, so much step-by-step um, -step process and feel like you're serving people with where they are at. All right. To do that, I'm going to share my iPad screen where I have these out there and let's go ahead and do that now. But before we do that, if you haven't already done so, wrong computer screen, let's share this one over here. If you haven't already done so, be sure to go to unbeatabletech.com slash blueprint and download my brand new um, seven step funnel blueprint that we put together just for you guys that walks you through the success path of building out that first funnel. It even has a complete funnel workbook that you can fill in all the exercises you need to get going with that. It's super cool, super free, and go check it out to launch smarter and more profitable funnels today. Woohoo! All right, now, if I can work this silly thing here, let me see if I can share my iPad screen. Yes, we got it. Look at that with the push of a button, no less. So I'm gonna share with you guys three offers. Now, you could call this three funnels, three offers, three customer journeys. The Whichever term you decide to use is totally up to you. But the idea here is that one product oftentimes can't make the business. But at the other end of the spectrum, having too many products that don't fit well together can create confusion, can create buyers that are overwhelmed, and for you can create bad results with your <laughs> business results, right? Be sure to leave me a note in the comment and let me know are you a one funnel Fred or are you having are you throwing too much spaghetti? Let's call you spaghetti Sally. Are you throwing too many products at your customers or do you only have one? Where are you at? Let me know in the comments below if you're live or in the replay. Let me know down below as well. All right. So let's talk about these three offers. We're going to go deeper in each one of these in future videos. I want to give you that bird's eye view in this quick live stream and let you know what the three are and how they kind of work together. Deal? The first offer is going to be our acquisition offer. We'll talk about that in a second. Our second offer is gonna be all about scaling our business. And our third offer is gonna be focused on impact, okay? Each one of these are not mutually exclusive. Offers can obviously do both. They can acquire customers and create impact in the world. But I want you to think about that step-by-step -step process and where each one of your products, your ideas, your funnels, where they fit in and where you could see them uh, fitting into this framework. Because I often find that when you don't have a framework, if you're just going out and throwing stuff up and seeing what comes out, uh, you're gonna be overwhelmed. You're gonna create a mess that you have to kind of wade through and your customers can feel overwhelmed as well. All right, and also if you have any questions in general about what we're talking about here, let me know. I'm gonna hang out after the content and answer your questions live. And if you're watching the replay, be sure to subscribe to the channel and ring the notification bell and all that stuff when I do go live so you can get your questions answered for free right here. All right, let's talk through the first one, the acquisition offer. 
And here, every funnel, every offer has its own primary goal. There's multiple goals that a product could do, but I want you to think about the main goal in each step here. The main goal of the acquisition is to be a break even funnel, which means if you put $1 in, all you really want to do is get a dollar or maybe a dollar 50, maybe $2 out. The goal here is not to be hyper profitable, to be a 10 X return on your investment that will come. Trust me that that's why there's three offers in this framework, but in order for you to really get off the ground and to feel like you're making progress, you want to start getting good, high quality leads and customers on your email list. And the best way to do that is with this acquisition offer. All right. So here's the general way this breaks down. Again, we're going to cover all these deeper in future videos, but you're going to start off with your traffic, whichever your proven source I've put down four here. I put down search. So like SEO would be right here. Facebook ads, if that's more your style, YouTube, which is probably where you're watching this right now for me, and Pinterest, which was one that I learned a lot about when I heavily supported uh, my wife's um, mommy business, mommy blog. And uh, there's no right or wrong answer here. The big thing is choose one that you can commit to and be consistent with. Uh, but also don't try to do all at once. Like I'm showing four here to let you know you can do whatever you want, but try to focus on one and get good at it. The goal here with the customer acquisition funnel is to get people onto your email list by offering a freebie. It could be something like the funnel blueprint, right? Or it could be a checklist, something easy, something consumable. You're getting people onto your email list. And once they're on that list, you're able to start nurturing that list, letting them know who you are, how you came to be in the position you are of coming to them in a position of a bit of an authority. And also, by the way, this is largely geared towards those who are helping a transformation occur in your audience. If you are a teacher, if you have become some form of an expert in something, again, you don't need to be an expert with credentials and things of that nature, but if you can help somebody achieve something that they desire, if your business is focused purely on entertainment purposes, um, this can still kind of work, I guess, but Again, we're talking about impact here. So th these are for high impact businesses where you can actually help achieve something with your audience. It can still work. And I still want you to think about it in frameworks here if you're not in the purely uh, transformative type of business model, but it definitely does is designed for that, right? What I like to do on my acquisition funnels is offer them some sort of a timer where you can give them a special offer. Sometimes, you know, in this example here, they opt in and they go straight to a sales page. Now that sales page would say, hey, thank you for signing up. Your goodie is on its way, but while you're on this page, check this offer out. It's a really great offer. And if you go to the slash blueprint, unbeatabletech.com slash blueprint, you'll see an example of this, right? I practice what I preach. And this gives a no brainer offer. We'll talk about that in a second, which then can lead them to an order page. And I've chosen to have some upsells here. So we've got some upsells and downsells. These are all simply ways of getting new buyers, new people from the interwebs, right? Like they just came in, they just opted in, they've gone through, they saw what you have to offer. That This looks interesting. The goal here in this section, in the, in the little pink section on my, my diagram here, is not to blitz them with so many offers that it hurts, right? Like I want you to go through your own funnel and see like, oh my gosh, am I get another offer, another thing. That can come across a little bit um, sleazy, let's just call it. It can come across as inauthentic, but it's important for you on this funnel. Again, your goal, dollar in, a dollar out, right? So if your front end tripwire offer, let's say it's a $7 ebook, right? Not, don't highly recommend ebooks, but we'll go with it for this example here because everybody can relate to this. It's going to be a little bit tricky, especially if you're going after paid traffic like um, Facebook ads to be able to spend money on your ads and get a break even result, put a dollar in, get a dollar out with only a $7 ebook, right? So that's not ideal. That's where the upsells and the downsells come in, where you're able to kind of juice up those returns, get a little bit more out of that initial transaction with your new audience member through uh, having some upsells and downsells. Now we'll talk more in detail about the upsells and downsells in a later uh, live video. If you have any questions about them, let me know in the, in the comments or in the chat. I'll try to get to them and prioritize those in my next live stream. But the general goal here is if you have a $7 front end product here, 
but then you maybe have upwards of two hundred dollars of potential revenue that can come in from all these upsells and downsells there's a good chance that instead of your average purchase price like when somebody goes through this process instead of them coming out with seven dollars of goodies they might come out with 37 47 dollars of goodies something somewhere in that ballpark because a, a fraction of them are going to take one or two of your upsells which is going to you know, increase the overall value of each one of your customers allowing you to acquire people on your list now break even why is that so important well it's important because once you can unlock this and be able to put that dollar in and get that dollar out and get people on your email list because again if all you're doing is getting a dollar for a dollar in, there's no value there but what the true value is is now your email list is not just your mom and your wife or something like that on your list now there's growing number of people that can be growing on a daily basis of people who are interested in what you have to say they're consuming your content and they're starting to see you as a trustworthy and authentic source of information in whatever they want the transformation to be right that's where the true power is because you can recycle that same dollar over and over and over again but each time you cycle it around maybe you get three more people on your list maybe if you cycle a hundred dollars around every day through advertising or other forms of, of paid traffic maybe you get 300 500 people on your email list every single day that's where it starts to get really powerful that's why we start here with the acquisition because nothing else matters until you can get people who start to build that relationship with you to be able to move them on to the next offer all right so let's do that let's move on to the next offer here i called this offer the scale offer probably could find a, a cooler title let me know if you can find a cooler title for them uh in the comments there but the purpose of this is to take this new audience, this new list of people who are starting to know, like, and trust you and help them at a higher level that allows you to honestly start to make the profit from all the efforts you're putting in, as well as starting to get them the results that they want. Now, this is not the impact offer. So this is going to be something where it's more scalable. It requires a little bit less of you and it can have more people go through the process. So online courses are great examples of these um, premium challenges that maybe can run on an evergreen basis are excellent examples of these. These are going to be your kind of mid price range offers that um, somebody right off, you know, being cold, not knowing you at all, maybe would not convert to an offer like this. But once they've been knowing you and starting to like you and, and trust your opinion this is when he's going to start to attract those types of audience members into these offers all right so that's exactly why this is offer too because through the first offer through the first funnel we just talked about you're getting people on your list and you're making this we didn't really talk about what the offer should be here so really want some quick wins something where there's inherent value in the thing itself it doesn't matter if it's you a guru or just some you know joe off the off the street if what you're offering is of extreme value they're going to take a chance on you and that's where you can start to build the trust once they're on your list the assumption with offer number two is that you already have some level of trust with your audience through your email marketing so we start here with our nurture sequence every good email marketing um you know practitioner should be nurturing their audience letting them know who you are what you do how you can help them examples of you helping them in the past all great components social proof of previous clients and testimonials all great examples of modules or content that could be inserted into your welcome sequence but along with that along with little things to build up your individual authority you want to be inviting them to learn something inviting them to take an action a link to click on in their email what you can do and i have trainings on how this all works technically but just follow me from like a theory perspective what this is essentially doing the nurture sequence is letting them take the next step when they are ready you're letting them set the tempo set the pace of the relationship you don't want to say oh act now or else it's all going away until they've shown that they're actually ready for an offer and that is the goal here. We're trying to make a really awesome offer that has a little bit of urgency and a little bit of scarcity baked into it because that can just increase your conversions and allow people to take that action if they're on the fence. So what you're doing in your nurture sequence here is you're adding in a few invitations of, hey, do you wanna see how this process works, how this system works, whatever the case might be. You have them click a link and what that link can do, and it's actually start 
a little bit of a countdown timer. Maybe it's a five day sequence. Maybe it's a one week sequence. Maybe it's a three day sequence. If you're on a, on you, you want quick cash or anything like that. And when they click that link, it starts a timer and it sends them to a special offer page. And generally you're going to see videos that have some value, kind of like a video sales letter or a webinar where you're going to teach them something. You know, you're going to make good on the promise that you invited them to from the email sequence, but then you're also going to make a special offer. Maybe this is something, maybe it's your primary course that's only open once a year, but through this email sequence, they have a chance to get in now. So there's true scarcity there because it's not open any other time of the year. Or it could be something where it's an evergreen product, but maybe you offer it at a nice discount through this process, then you can offer them that there. Once they take that step, once they go and start to see your special offer, your special sales sequence, let's say best case scenario, they decide to buy, they go through the order page, the upsell page, maybe have a couple of upsells, but because this is generally gonna be a higher price product, something in the 100 to $1,000 range, again, it all depends on your audience, your confidence of what you're selling and the value in the thing itself. So there's a ton there on pricing strategies we can get to another day. But this special offer is going to be a pretty straightforward sale once they see it. Okay, but what if they don't buy on the first watch? Probably not going to happen. There might This might be a 30 minute, hour long video, something of that nature. Some people are going to drop off. All right, but because we had that recorded click by going through that special um, click sequence over here, we can then put them onto a follow-up email sequence. This email sequence, because it, you can set this up correctly, uh, where you synchronize, hey, they clicked the link, now let me send them over here. I know I've got a five-day countdown timer, so I can sequence sequence out these emails to say, hey, you've got you know 24 hours left, 18 hours left, something like that in your email sequence, which can drive that action. Most people, they know that there's actually valuable training in this web page, if I watch this web page, I'm going to see something of true value. If you add on the scarcity of, by the way, you won't be able to watch this in two more days. So be sure to click here and watch it now. That will definitely drive up the watch rate, the open rate, and the conversion rate of this funnel. Okay. So you can remind them through these deadlines, through these emails to follow through this, this process. And during the duration of this sale, they'll follow through this normal process. What happens after though? You can actually using tools like either Deadline Funnel, if you're not a Thrive Suites fan like I am, or you can use Thrive Ultimatum, which is included in Thrive Suite, all that good stuff. Uh, you can set this up very, very easily. And then after the expiration is over, let's say it's that five day timer and five days is over, you can bounce them out instead of seeing that video anymore. Anytime they try to access this sales video, you can send them to a fallback page. This could simply say, hey, this offer is no longer available. I'm so sorry. Be sure to you know, subscribe to find out when it's open again, something like that. If it's one of those evergreen, or I'm sorry, one of those one time a year enrollment period courses, you can have a specific wait list for the next launch. So you can start to build that up over time. Or you could send them to uh, an evergreen sales page, maybe at full price or something like that. And, but then you know, from there, if you choose to go the evergreen route, the process will still be the same once they go through it, upsells, downsells, whatever you need to do to um, increase the value you're giving to your audience as well as increasing your average order value. All right, last one. Offer number three is the impact offer. And I call it the impact offer because there's two ways you can approach this, uh, this thing here, this offer here. One way is increase the impact by helping people complete offer number two. So if offer number two is an online course, we have about 100,000 students in our online uh, schools. The sad truth is purely an online course on its own. A lot of people don't have that internal fire, that motivation and that persistence to complete the course to achieve the results. Nothing wrong with the there's nothing wrong with the idea of an online course that's done at your own pace. There's a ton of value in that. But ultimately people have to follow through to get the result, right? We're not, unless you're a snake oil salesman, like there's work to be done to get the results you want. So the impact offer can help people achieve that result. Maybe it's through an online community where they work together to implement offer number two, or it could be uh, where if you are really good at the thing and you like doing the thing, like I like building funnels, it's kind of fun for me, 
maybe what it's called funnel. Anyways, so you could also offer on offer number three, done for you or done with you services. So you could say, hey, I will coach you for 12 months. We'll talk every week and I will personally walk and guide you through the problems you are having as you're going through the, uh, you know, the actions. Or you can do it for them and charge a reasonable price to make it worth your time. That's the goal uh, of offer number three is to take these people Maybe it's, maybe they didn't even go through offer number two. Maybe they just got in through offer number one and they're on your list. You might reach out to them through a simple email, maybe one of your weekly broadcasts that says, hey, P.S., if you're interested in learning how we can work together to achieve this goal, then click here and learn more about coaching or consulting with me. Or uh, to upgrade people from your online course, maybe your offer number two, to a community, it's very po uh, popular and effective to add a lesson inside of your course that says, hey, would you like to join the community? Go ahead and click here to sign up or become part of this community, right? Some way you're gonna drive people over and depending on, there's several ways of doing this. This is a little bit of uh, choose your own adventure here. Uh, if you're going to be offering services or something of higher value, you might get some freebie seekers or tire kickers who just want to talk to you and pick your brain without having any sort of qualifications to join in. So what's common is you can describe what your services are on this offer page. You know, the page could be, hey, let's learn about how we can implement your sales funnel today, something like that. They watch a little video, a little case study, and they maybe sign up to talk to you. Or there's simply a button here that says, yes, let's, let's do it, that just says go and links them over to an application. These applications are important. Uh, it's important for you to respect your client enough to not get somebody into your system without them kind of being prepared for it. So if you require $10,000 up front, let's say, maybe let them know that this is not a free offer on the application and make them kind of commit to saying, I can get access to the funds needed to move forward, something like that. Or if there's certain demographics or certain types of people that you just don't serve as well. So, you know, for example, um, Start a Mom Blog is our main brand. And if we look at who we get refunds from, it's generally non-moms, <laughs> like, which is okay. Like our, our content works for everybody, but it doesn't necessarily attract everybody. And so um, certain ways of just making sure you're aligned with the person coming in, an application form is excellent. They complete the application, they get access to your booking calendar where they can sign up for a little chat. And then once you get them on the phone, uh, you can have you know take payment right there, you can do a proposal. Again, it all really depends on what the offer is. But the reason why this is offer number three is that number one, it is the most manual labor laborious of the three offers. It actually takes your time to kind of go through this process or having salespeople to close these deals. So until you have a good following. This is kind of a tricky one there. And then secondly, it's important for you to have kind of your manifesto, your system, your solution down pat before you start uh, going into this impact area because you wanna have your, your systemization done. You wanna know what your process is so that when you do start to bring people in to the system, you can commit, you can fulfill, and you can you know, exceed expectations through the work there. All right, so that is the high level overview of a three offer system. And what's beautiful about this system between you know, acquire, scale, and impact is you could be teaching the same thing. You could be providing the same outcome three different ways. If they have more time than money, they can go in through your acquisition funnel and get it all done themselves. If they're kind of in between, they have a little bit more, they, they want a bit more guidance, but they don't want to pay for you to do it for them. They'll come in through offer number two, get your online course and go knock it out of the park. Or lastly, there's some people who have more money than time, or at least have more of a budget for that. And they just want you to do it for them. It's nice for you to have an offer for that person to get them the result they want. All right. I hope this was helpful for you. Let me know if this makes sense. If this is uh, kind of illuminate some things, because I hear some people say, Oh, I'm a coach. So I don't, sell books or I'm a online course seller. So I don't do done for you services. And I don't want you to feel like you have to have all of these up front. They come in time. I, I put them one, two, three, because I think that is the order for you to implement them. It comes from the least commitment from your 
uh, client to the most. So it helps you grow and scale in that order. All right. I hope that was helpful. Uh, last call to action here is if you don't already have your funnel set up or if you're going through it and you feel like you're kind of missing something, go to unbeatabletech.com slash um, blueprint and download the funnel blueprint, which is free for you. And it's freshly minted out. I have it printed out here somewhere. Here it is. Nope, that's something else. Go check it out. <laughs> With that, let me go through some of these questions. I got a few people here live. Dan says he's more of the spaghetti style right now. I hear you. Truth be told, um, we were that way a long time. We've gone through the cycle of having one product, then two, then three, then four, then 24. And now we're actually going back and pulling back and uh, consolidating them to be able to create this customer journey. So, uh, you have to test to see which one's going to work, which one's going to stick, but I, I totally understand where you're coming from. We're there too. Nourish Thinking says, you just finished your book. Congratulations. And you want an online course. Yes. Yes. That is an awesome way to go. I mean, in fact, we, we mentioned in the this video here that eBooks are very popular acquisition offers. Um, it, with the right marketing, you can absolutely create a book funnel, book funnel. They're sending traffic to your book, having a few upsells and downsells to increase the value, and be able to just sell hundreds and you know, up to a thousand books a day if you find the right method and the right system and you're tracking it and you're optimizing it. Um, the obvious next step there is the online course. And what's great is, depending on your goals, right? You could offer the online course immediately after they purchase the ebook, which we'll dive into these topics later on. Um, and that way, you don't need to make a bunch of different upsell offers for your ebook funnel. You could put the course on the back end, you know, right there on the thank you page as an upsell from the ebook. Uh, you can't, there are some pros and cons of that, but if you're looking for a way of, of filling out your funnel and getting that first funnel profitable, even if you have to provide a steep discount from what you feel your online course is valued at, then it could be worth it for you to kind of grow that list faster. Setting smart goals to achieve weight loss. That is awesome. That is awesome. And that's something that I'm the cook of the house and I'll find recipes that I like. And then I realize all the recipes I really like are actually not that healthy. <laughs> and so I'm trying to find the balance there. I might need your book. Kay is asking, can this work with affiliate marketing? <sighs> or key, Kay, key leads says that. It could. Um, I do have a training on uh, affiliate, like specific affiliate funnels. This is not really set up as a specific affiliate funnel, but just to show you here, um, you know what? Let's see if we can zoom in here a little bit. Again, um, there's if you go to, gosh, I need to go get a list of all my important call to action URLs. A little note to self there. But if you're driving traffic, let's say for the example here, let's say you've got an email list and you're driving traffic to an uh, opt-in page. Let, let's say, for example, you sell, um, or give me an example of a product that you are an affiliate for, um, and we can kind of riff off of that. But I'm thinking for right now, you could say you're doing um, nourished thinking has a dog on our picture. So let's say you have affiliate offers for a dog course or like a dog product. So let's say you're, you're an affiliate for leashes or leads. So um, you could say, for example, your opt-in could be, Learn the seven tips to prevent your dog from attacking your neighbors or, or whatever, like barking too much, or whatever the case might be. Uh, uh, there's a problem that the product you are an affiliate for can help solve. So figure out the angle there. Okay. Okay, gotcha. I got gotcha, you nourished. All right. So in that example, you would still want to capture leads. So you would say seven tips to dot, dot, dot. And once they opt in, you would do something very similar to, um, I think it's offer number two, where you're going to have that video or some sort of training that walks through some tips, some tricks of how to achieve that goal, let's say to prevent your dog from barking. And maybe there's a really awesome dog collar or dog leash that you talk about in one of the steps that you could say, by the way, of all of these tips, if there's one that you can implement and should implement today, it is buying this leash and doing these exercises we just covered. There's a link down below 
click that link and you can go and buy the leash right now. And that right there would be your affiliate link. And what what's nice about this one is that normally affiliate marketing has the downfall of not being good at building lists, not building email lists, because you're just sending people off your website to other offers. And when they buy that other offer, you don't get access to their information or their, their email. Here, you're having them opt in and it can still help to drive that traffic. Uh, where this, I'm not gonna say fails, but like where this is not as optimal as having your own offers, is you don't con you don't really control that funnel. Like once you send them off your website, so this is to somebody else's website here, you don't have access to the average order value. If they if you want to you know get to where you could pay traffic, like I'm gonna spend a hundred dollars a day on ads to drive traffic to, into this funnel, it's gonna be trickier to break even because you can't manipulate the results. Like you can't add more offers, you can't test the pricing and all that stuff. So it's doable, but it's not really ideal for affiliate marketing. Alrighty. Ooh, got really big there. Let me bring your comment size down here. There we go. Nourish Thinking says, I don't understand the first offer of the three acquisition. Do you make money from that? Great, let's scroll back here. I'll kind of leave your comment at the top here. Ideally, yes. Um, the, okay, so as I said earlier in the video, every funnel should have a primary goal. The primary goal of the first funnel is to be able to build your list very quickly. So while you're making money, like the goal here is to have something to sell. You know, for example, maybe this is your seven dollar goal setting diet book, right? Um, obviously, every sale you make, you're making seven dollars. And if all you're doing is driving traffic organically, meaning you're giving people maybe YouTube videos, or you're sending people from Pinterest or from blogging, you will make money because you're selling something for money and you're not spending any money, I'm putting that in air quotes, you're not spending any money to drive that traffic. Um, the downside with all organic traffic though, is that you can't grow faster, right? You can only grow as fast as you can push out blog posts and push out videos and do the marketing and all that stuff you're doing. So the reason why I said the primary goal is to build your list, not to make money, is because if you get to the point where your organic efforts are working, it's converting and you're getting customers, you're likely gonna wanna grow that faster. So that's when you would implement or take a look at either um, you know, Facebook ads to be able to put more money in on a more consistent basis and get more consistent results out. And if you start doing that, I would not stop until you get to the point where you're putting maybe $500 a day in, getting $500 a day out on in revenue, where you're not making any profit, but goodness gracious, you're gonna have a humongous uh, email list and, uh, and your audience will be building to where any other offer you create, any affiliate offer you promote in one of your email broadcasts, any course you come up with, anything like that will be pure profit because you don't need to get those people anymore. You got them on your email list. So that's where the primary goal is. But uh, what we have done a lot um, over the years is we'll target a 2x return, meaning for our front end offers, we're trying to get two times the money out that we put in. So spend $100 in ads, my target was to get $200 out in revenue, which is a $100 profit, then I can rinse, repeat, reuse that, grow it, and also have a little bit of wiggle, uh, wiggle room in case we have refunds, in case any of those types of things happen, any potential reporting errors or glitches in Facebook that does happen, uh, you've got that margin of error built in. So that's been our target, but I hope that it, it helps explain what the goal is. Obviously, if you're happier to stay smaller, you can certainly get a higher return on your investment by spending less. A, a, a natural thing that happens is you're, you're very efficient. If you're spending a dollar a day, like Facebook's able to go and put that $1 to good use. You start, start spending a thousand, 10,000, a hundred thousand dollars a day. Obviously you're gonna have some inefficiencies. You're gonna be hitting the same people with more ads. So your return will drop. Finding out where you wanna be in that spectrum, how much you wanna spend and get out versus how profitable you wanna be in the process. That's a, an individual business decision you get to make. Alrighty. Oh, thank you. You did our 30 day challenge and you got your book published. Awesome. Cannot wait to see it. Oh, I would love to get a free copy. That'd be great. Alrighty. Uh, last question here from key. 
Do funnels work well with agency services? Example, web design. Absolutely. Or SEO. Exactly. Uh, absolutely. I mean, the, the first clarification I would say, let me get this over here. There we go. The first clarification I would ha have for you, Key, is that a funnel is just a customer acquisition process. It's just a process to get people to know about you, start liking you, and doing stuff that you want them to do. <laughs> Whether you want them to buy an ebook or sign up for a service, that's the, that's the thing. In fact, my first month as an entrepreneur, I, I went straight into services because, for one, I like people. I actually do like working with people. It's rather strange because I'm very introverted. Um, but I liked feeling that impact of the work that I did. And also, I knew that I could make more money with less customers by doing services. Like, I knew I was not going to replace my engineering salary by selling $7 ebooks, at least until I started to build these systems. So I went into services and I followed a variation of offer number three, where what I did was I made YouTube videos and I just taught everything I was learning as I was uh, mixing my engineering background with digital marketing building off of what we were doing on our blog and I would offer people free I, I, again <laughs> this is what I started with and I probably wouldn't do it this exact same way again but I offered a free 30 minute consult with me um, to help people get unstuck and then most of them wanted to continue working with me so that's what I did it took a lot of time a lot of freebie seekers I, I learned about the application processes as I was growing so you can work it and scale it but in short absolutely funnels for agency services is phenomenal and what's great about it is your like the back end of your funnel can only grow and grow so let's say you get five clients and, and you're good like any more than that you know, that's too many bosses if you're like a one-person shop whatever to put what your goals are but once you get that set up and you have your five clients for one you can stop advertising if you're happy and then just turn the machine back on whenever you lose a client which does happen and secondly those five clients can get more valuable over time because you're going to learn more skills. They're going to build more trust in you as you're delivering those outcomes for them. And so let's say you're, you're, you start off with just building a simple website. You do that. They're happy with it. It's gorgeous. But now they're like, okay, you did what I wanted you to do. Now, what should I do next to actually make this website make me money? You're like, well, you probably need search engine optimization or you might need Facebook ads. You might need these different things. And so you can upsell your existing clients with just an email or just a phone call, depending on your style. And, and so I, I really am a big fan of agency services. Uh, it, it's one of those things that even if you still have a job, um, you can start to brainstorm how you can get that agency service started. Like what would you want to offer? What skills can you learn before you've taken the leap to entrepreneurship? And, and you can pretty quickly start your business that way. Uh, in fact, you know, kind of a little fun fact here on Skilljet, which let me see if I can pull this up for you guys. Since now we're just hanging out chatting. I taught a course on this. Let me go to screen share. That's the wrong screen. So let's go over to secondary screen. I don't know why I got all mixed up. All right. So one of the courses I did for a, a friend company of mine called Brainstorm Force. Let's go to Skilljet. I taught this course for their platform called where am I at? There I am. A masterclass for growing your web design business. Because I, I quickly went from never <laughs> doing this. Like, I built a website for a small business when I was in high school. And then I went to school and started doing other things. And I, I dropped it. Uh, but then I came back to it and uh, put together this entire course. And I don't know, actually. I think to get access to this, you have to buy something. So um, you know, feel free just to subscribe. And I'll, I'll teach a lot of what's in here as well from it. But I do think it was a pretty awesome course. Um, so yeah, long story short, yes, you can do it. All right, guys, uh, last little call to action here. I'm going to let you guys go, uh, but be sure to check out the unbeatabletech.com slash blueprint to help you launch your funnel. You can do it. It's fun. It's, it's not easy, but it's fun and you learn a lot and I'm here to help you. I'll see you in the next one. Take care.